So question 95, we're getting close to 100 now. 95 is all about the car accelerating through three points. So let's see how we get on with this one. So the important words to begin with are constant acceleration. So that tells me I can use the constant acceleration or SUVAT equations. So I'm going to look at this first stage of the journey, PQ. And I'm saying that the displacement is 70. Um, I'm not interested and I don't really know anything about the initial velocity, so I'll leave that blank. The final velocity I'm going to call capital V and the acceleration capital A. So I want the formula that doesn't have the U in it. And that's this one, S equals VT minus a half AT squared. So putting these things into that formula gives that there. So now I need to look at the second part of the journey between Q and R. And the nice thing about this is that the final velocity on the PQ leg is going to be the same as the initial velocity on the QR leg. So the initial velocity here is V. Uh, the acceleration on the second leg is the same as on the first leg. So I've now got um, uh, to find the formula that doesn't have the V in it, and that is this one. So when I put these values into this equation, I get a nice equation there. So now I've got two equations and two unknowns. I can solve those using any of the available methods that are available to you and find that the value for V is approximately 18.3 and the acceleration um, about 1.7 meters per second per second. So we've actually answered um, the first part of the question to find the acceleration of the car in meters per second squared, which is we, what we've done there. But now we need to know its velocity at R. Well, um, that's this figure here. So we better give that a letter to start with. Let's call that W. So now I'm trying to find W and I've got all the available uh, information I need. So I'm going to use the simplest formula, V equals U plus AT. So putting this information into that formula now, gives me a figure for W. So W um, is 152 over seven meters per second. But hang on a minute, we've got to find that velocity in miles per hour. So a little bit more work to do, multiplying by 60 and 60 to get into um, meters per hour, and then kilometers per hour, and then multiplying by five eighths to give miles per hour, just under 49 or 50 miles an hour. So the final part of the question is to state how we've modeled the car. Well, as usual, we model the car as a particle and that enables us to ignore air resistance. And it also means that all of our measurements are instantaneous. We don't have to worry about the length of the car or any of those sorts of effects. So um, that's the answer to the question.